promised we'd be picking up right from where we left off this morning, which was on the equation of the tangent and the normal. Okay, now we're going to zoom in on the tangent because tangents are so awesome, so many cool things that come out from them. I'm going to show you one of the most interesting, um, you know, brain explaining results. Okay, so let's um, let's get down the equation of a tangent. Like I said, we're remembering them not for the sake of querying them, but so that when you use them, you recognize them, right? Now, if I want the tangent at a point, say, P, its gradient is going to be P, right? So it's going to start like this. And that funny, unusual thing we noticed about the y-intercept is that it corresponds exactly to the y-coordinate of the point where you're coming from, right? Like you're coming from 2AP, AP squared, AP squared, and you're hitting the y-axis at minus AP squared. It's kind of interesting, okay? So here's the first interesting thing we're going to look at, which will sort of reveal the power of why these ways of saying the equations are so useful, okay? If this is a tangent at P, what might be the equation of a tangent at Q? Q, Q, and it's going to be, yeah, QX minus AQ squared. Okay, no big deal, okay? Now, any time the mathematicians get their hold of a new tool, a new way to represent things, they're like, cool, what kinds of things can we do with this, okay? Now, if you've got two tangents at two different points, P and Q being distinct, one of the most natural questions that kind of flows out of that is, well, where do these two tangents intersect, okay? Where do the tangents intersect? This ends up being um, the kind of question that sends you on a bit of a sends you down a rabbit hole, but you get all these interesting things out of it as a result. Okay? So where do the two tangents intersect? That's the question we're going to ask. Okay? Now, just on the face of it, if I said I've got a straight line, I've got a straight line. Right? I know there's p's and q's and weird stuff flying around, but they're just numbers, they're just constants of some kind of value. What would you do, just off the base of it, to find where they intersect? I'm just going to solve them simultaneously, right? And being that both of them have y as a subject, I might as well just make these two equal to each other, like so. Now, once I solve this, because I've eliminated y out of the equation, right, I'm going to get values for, or a value rather, for x. That's the x coordinate of where the tangents intersect. And using that, you can find a y coordinate. Off you go, it'll take a couple of minutes. You want to solve for x, right? So therefore, I've got x over here, x over there. You want to get stuff on the right side. Okay, so I would do this over here, and then just place that ap squared over the other side. ap squared, and that minus aq squared is still hanging around. Okay. Now I can do a lot with this. There's loads of things to factorize, right? Over on the left-hand side, I'm going to take out the x, perfect. Over on the right hand side, I can do two things. I can take out the a, and then I can also do the difference of two squares. So I've got p minus q, p plus q. Okay, now at this point, I can do some grand cancelling, but why? Because what am I going to cancel? I'm going to cancel p minus q, and the reason why I can, the reason I can divide both sides by this is because it's not zero, because p and q are not the same. There are two different places, okay? So I'm going to divide through and I just get left with this. Okay? That's nice and neat, isn't it? Okay? Once you take this, you can pop this into many of these equations, right? And you're going to get a y value out of it, right? So if this is x, if I say y equals, pop it in the top one, will that do? Yeah? So far so good? There's an AP squared hanging out the front there, plus an APQ, and then that AP squared and that AP squared cancel out, leaving you with this. Okay, so, <clears throat> excuse me, let's just pause for a second, right? What does this mean? I've got an X here and I've got a Y here. So now I have a point of intersection of the two tangents, wherever the tangents are. The answer to this question, where do the tangents intersect, is at, uh, let's have a look here, a p plus q, comma, a p q. That's the point of intersection, okay? Now, 
Just like before, once you get a result, you want to push on it a little bit and see if it yields you any insights, okay? For instance, for instance, I want you to have a look at the right-hand side of the board. I want you to remember this morning and um, before your AP2s, we were looking at the equation of the chord, right? Now, we didn't just prove the equation of the chord. We noticed some interesting things about it. For instance, if the chord passes through the focus, it passes through the focus and it's a chord, so we call it a focal chord, right? The focus, uh, at least your, your sort of classic focus, it has the coordinates 0, A, right? So if we pop this into the equation of the chord, I, remember, I wonder if you remember what results. Um, here's A, right? There's A. Where does the 0 come in? It just makes this term disappear. Do you remember that? So you get this, okay? And then you divide through by minus A and out pops this guy. Okay? Now what does that mean? Do you remember what that means? Yeah. It means the equations of the tangents, sorry, the gradients of the tangents, they multiply to minus 1, which means the tangents themselves are perpendicular, okay? The tangents themselves, they intersect at this point. Ah, but hold on a second, this tells us even more. It tells us not only are the tangents perpendicular, but PQ is right here, right? So, if the tangents are on the ends of, these are the tangents, right, are on the ends of a chord which passes through the focus. So if they're on the ends of a focal chord, if the tangents are on the ends of a focal chord, right, then I can say where do the tangents intersect? PQ is negative 1, right? So therefore, I can say they intersect at this point. I might as well replace this with this because I can get rid of, because Q is just minus 1 over P. Comma, PQ is negative 1, minus A. What's that? Minus A. That's the directrix, right? We did this, we animated, and we saw that that point of intersection, it always lay on that bottom line, okay? So here's a quick picture in case you can't remember. There's our parabola. Here's our directrix down here, okay? If you pick out a chord that goes through, it looks like the focus is roughly there, okay? So here's a focal chord. Right? Let's put some tangents into this thing, so something like this. We know two things. Sorry, it's a bit rough. The tangents are going to be perpendicular, but not only are they perpendicular, the locus of points traced out by the point of intersection is the directrix. In fact, that's an alternative definition of the directrix, right? It's the locus of points traced out by the points of intersection of these tangents, okay? So long as they sit on the opposite ends of the focal chord, okay? 